What's up everyone? My name is Ronnie Guy. Welcome back to the channel and today we are doing something a little bit different. I have announced a little while ago that I wanted to start something called a Rowdy Time, like every first Monday of the month. And this is kind of like a show where not uh, I will be the main character, but you guys will be the main character because I wanted to get some questions from you guys and to like uh, give my honest opinions on all of the stuff that has been going on as well in virtual reality as about like things that you just want to know about me, about the channel, uh, all of that kind of stuff. So I dropped that on Twitter, I dropped that on Facebook and I dropped that on YouTube and um, then I was waiting and I was actually surprised by how many people were commenting on this which made me feel pretty good about this because that makes my job a lot easier if there's a lot of questions. So what I'm going to do in the next section is I'm going to try and answer uh, all of the questions that you guys have been asking me. Now there are quite a few so I might forget a few. If I forgot your question, please let me know in the comment box below and I'll try to answer it next episode, which will be the first Monday of next month. This is getting complicated, isn't it? So let's start with YouTube as that is like, you know, my main platform uh, on the social media. And the first question I actually got was from, it's me, LKH. Uh, Rowdy guy, are you in a relationship? And yes, I am. I actually just got engaged. And I did that in virtual reality. I dropped a video of that on, on there as well. But since my girlfriend is a little bit more private than me, she asked me to like put it on private again. Uh, so you guys might have caught like a glimpse of that maybe on the podcast uh, because it was shown on there as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm in a relationship. Uh, we're doing pretty great. And we're hopefully going to get married pretty soon. Not, not like that we're not planning, that I'm not planning on marrying her. It just, you know, it needs to be manageable in, 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 time, in terms of time and money which is a lot. Another question from It's Me LKH was, how much would you do for YouTube? Well, um, I think I already do quite a bit for YouTube. I mean, I've been trying to invest all of my spare time in this platform. Uh, I try to like engage as much as I can with you guys as possible. Um, I don't know if there's any more that I can do. I mean, I invested a lot of money in equipment. Uh, I invest a lot of my time, uh, my job is suffering, my private life is suffering. No, I'm joking, I'm, I'm all right, don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's much more that I can do, except for maybe like a monthly ritual sacrifice. That might be a good idea. Legendary Keith asked me, where are you from? Belgium? Question mark. Yeah, I am, how did, how did you know? Did I already tell you? Why are you asking the question then, Legendary Keith? Um, I am from Belgium, we're going to win probably the World Cup, or, or not, because we got a lot of injuries and stuff. I'm, I'm a football fan when it involves like my own country, for the rest I don't really care about football, but yeah, it's a really fun time. It's a really fun time to be in Belgium now as well, because the weather is actually kind of nice in the spring. Uh, we have a lot less rain uh, compared to, for example, England at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a fun period because you know the World Cup is coming, everyone gets really excited, there's a lot of bars, there's a lot of stuff going on. So yeah, at this point in time, it's pretty nice to be in Belgium. Uh, then uh, Blake Birch, what is your goal for subs? Uh, I don't think you should have a goal for subs really because YouTube is getting less and less focused on the amount of subscribers that you actually have, but more on like, you know, the watch time, how engaged people are on your channel, uh, how many of those uh, subscribers are actually watching your content. I think that is far more important uh, than focusing on that sub counter rise. Of course, it's nice, don't get me wrong. I would love to get to 100K tomorrow or like to a million in like a, a year or something. But I mean, you need to be a little bit realistic as well. And what I think is much more important is that, is that you have an engaging community, something that you know can rely on and persons that you can build a bond with than uh, actually just a, a sub count that keeps on going up and those people are actually not really interested in your content but they're just interested because you have a channel. Uh, Blake Birch also asks, are you ever going to play that VR Prison Escape game? I think you mean Prison Boss. I was expecting a question about that because that's probably the thing that made the channel explode. I had a lot of fun playing a game but I played it you know, I kind of finished the game and I'm not the kind of person to go back into it then and see like if I can like just regenerate the views on that. Uh, I, I did like some deviations of that, but I don't think at the moment I'll be going back into Prison Boss just because there's no new content really there. I'll just be doing the same thing. And I know a lot of people have been asking me to do that, but that's not really what this channel is about. I want this channel to be really fun and engaging for all the new people coming to join as well. Uh, I want to really build a connection and, and you know build that community. That, that is what my main focus is. Um, so yeah, I will jump back into Prison Boss when they come with new content that is what I think is engaging enough and will be of value to the channel. 
there you go. All right, then we have uh, Mobile Decay asking me, have you ever had two chicks at once? And I got only one answer to that, and that is no comment. All right, then we got another question from Brony. Uh, he's asking me, what is my favorite VR brand? I mean, I, I'm, I'm expecting that you want to know like what kind of headset I prefer. Is it like the Oculus or the HC5 or the PlayStation VR? Um, it's a very difficult one to answer that one because I don't really have a preference between the two because they all have their own strengths. I mean, you have a lot of great games that come out on Oculus and I really like the content that they're bringing out. Uh, then again, you have that little, a little bit of a closed wall, although that is disappearing now a little bit. And then you have the HC Vive, which is great for room scale. It's so much easier to record with um, because with the Oculus, you still have that like, uh, that decreased field of view uh, that you have not in the headset but on your on your actual screen you know, on the gameplay screen from which you record or with the HC Vive you can use the open VR plugin in OBS which makes it so much easier to record with this is getting a bit technical I don't know if you guys are interested in this if you don't like that technical stuff just let me know and I'll leave it out in the next episode um, and then the PlayStation VR is probably the one that is the most comfortable and the most easy to set up because you just like put it on and you're in game in terms of quality then, I mean, I, I still, I'm a huge fan of the PlayStation VR just because uh, the clarity of the screen is so incredibly good. The resolution is less, of course, because you're dealing with, you know, a PlayStation, not a PC, but still, it's a great headset and the games that are coming out on that are really, really, really good. I really like that one. So if I have to say, if I have to choose one um, for recording, I would say the HC Vive. That, that's just the easiest one to record with. Uh, and then for... Um, for playing, I think I think I would say PlayStation. Then. I think because uh, the PlayStation is just um, it's so easy. Although I don't like the the motion wand controllers, I don't really like that then again. But still, I, I like the games that they're bringing out. They're of really high quality, really good, uh, really good stuff. Although Oculus is doing a very good move and like trying to catch playing catch up with that. We got Laura Lee Golden asking me, what is your most embarrassing moment? Online and offline, uh, what is your favorite thing about YouTube? Okay, we got Laura Lee Golden asking me, what is your most embarrassing moment? Okay, we got okay, we got Laura Lee Golden asking me, what is your most embarrassing moment online and offline? Good question. I gotta think about that one. I think my most embarrassing moment offline was that um, I played in a band for quite a while and. Uh, at one time we had uh, we had a gig and I was always very energetic, much much like I am on the channel. You know, I'm 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 a rowdy dude. Um, that's kind of where I got the name from. But I think that was uh, it was in my hometown and we had a gig there. And we were doing the sound check, and at a certain point in time, I wanted to listen. You know how the audio was in the in the in the hallway. Where there was still nobody there except for like a few people and the sound engineers and the, and the rest of the band, of course. So I came up with the brilliant idea, let me just jump off stage and then, you know, hop over the, the they had like chairs like stacked there, like let me just like jump over the chairs real quickly uh, and then I can, uh, I can listen in the, in the, in the hall, what is, how, how, it's, how it's sounding. So I jumped off the first chair and it went perfectly because those chairs were all attached, you know, they were all attached to each other, they didn't move. You can already hear where this is going, right? I jumped to the second row, still attached, but the third one, they hadn't really attached those yet. So I jumped on those chairs with the speed of the first and the second one already, and that chair just went like, and it was gone. And I kind of fell on the floor with the microphone hanging over, hanging over me. Uh, everyone started laughing, of course, everyone that was there. I started laughing because it was hilarious. I think that is like one of the most embarrassing moments. That, of, of course, Luckily, it wasn't like what all the, what all of the audience there was just like maybe like I don't know like 15, 20 people like sound engineers and, and some people like that. It still felt quite quite embarrassing. I, I just pretended like you know the best thing you can do in a moment like that is just start laughing with yourself because that that takes off the edge a bit. If you start acting all like all weird and that kind of stuff, it just makes it funnier. So yeah, I think that's my most embarrassing moment offline. <laughs> Thank you for that question. And now online. I haven't had too many moments online yet that were really embarrassing, but I do think I had... Um, I, I, the first thing that comes to my mind is when I tried that dating simulator and um, you had to like... It was with voice recognition. I forgot the name of it, like... 
it was Valentine's Day that I played it, and what I basically had to do was I had to use my voice and then say, like, re read out loud, like, cards that were in front of me, and that would, like, engage a conversation with the, with the pretty blonde girl that was sitting in front of me. But that failed, like, miserably, and I kept on trying it. I'm not joking, I tried that for, like, maybe an hour, trying to get that thing to work, which gave me, like, an hilarious amount of, uh, of clips just from that entire uh, uh, recording, but it didn't really... It just didn't, it just wouldn't work. It was like, she was like completely ignoring me the entire time online in a virtual reality space. I'm, I'm, you have to think about this. I'm trying a virtual reality dating app and even there, the girl is not trying to respond to me. I felt so embarrassing. <laughs> and then Laura Lee Golden also asked me, what is your favorite thing about YouTube? I think this is basically my favorite thing. Just like the, the amount of interaction that you have. Uh, with content creators like like I myself like the I really enjoy having that personal connection with with you guys out there watching my content that you guys can ask me questions that you guys watch my videos and that you guys have a say in what we do on the channel as well I really enjoy that part of YouTube because it's it's such an engaging concept I really enjoy that that's my favorite part uh, across the entire platform what VR game do you like the most from Man Billenman? Oh, you're from my Discord, aren't you? Yeah, I think you are. You're, you're the dude from my Discord. Um, my most favorite VR title... Uh, the first thing that comes to mind must be it, and I would still say that is super hot. Uh, I really think that is such a great title and something that I drop people in every time they come over. That's the game that I want them to try out, because that, that is one of those kind of games that make you understand what VR is about and why it is so cool. Because you feel like a freaking superhero, and who doesn't want to be a freaking superhero, right? I mean, why are the only Avenger and Marvel movies all so popular? It's because people just love superheroes. I love superheroes. Heck, that would be a good question. What is your favorite superhero? Tip. <laughs> Mr. Mitchie asked me, have you ever went into a store and got powered by fans? No, I haven't. I definitely haven't. I don't think my channel was anywhere near to, to, uh, to get recognized like that. I did get recognized once on a, on a gaming convention by, uh, by a guy from Belgium who uh, watched my Prison Boss series. So, yeah, that was pretty awesome. Uh, Gabriel R asked me, did you ever burn your hand? I did. As a, as a kid, I burned it very badly. I was kind of like the... Um, uh, how would I say it? The adventurous type. Uh, I think. Uh, for example, I know that one time I'm, my mother asked me, like, um, is the stove still on? And my brilliant mind was like, let me go and check. And I put my hand on the stove, and uh, five minutes later, we were on our way to the hospital because I got burn wounds on my hand. <laughs> Another stupid thing I did was when I had, like, you guys probably don't remember that, but we had, like, uh, Walkmans back then, but you still had to plug them in. I don't know why they were called the Walkman and they were... I probably had to plug them in to charge them or something. It must have been something like that. Uh, but I had the brilliant idea because um, I wanted to have a wireless. So what I did was, while I was plugged in, I just like... <coughs> cut the cord. Uh, which meant that the entire house all of a sudden got like uh, zapped. Uh, I got an electrical zap and that's probably what made me crazy. True story. <laughs> Tyler Mabry has asked me, has anyone ever tried to hurt or kill you or anyone that you know? The questions are getting a bit, like, you know, aggressive here. Uh, no, I don't think that I've ever uh, been threatened for my life. I don't think that has ever happened. I mean, there, there have been times that things have gotten a bit rowdy, if you don't mind me using that word. Um, but no, I've never been uh, scared of dying or like someone would kill me or something like that. No. Nope, never. Okay, and then we jump over to the question that you guys have asked me on uh, Twitter. Uh, we saw with Project Jamesify, is there any way to get some private rowdy time? Of course, James, you know where to find me. And then we got Aminus, Eric Hartley, asking me, what was the thing that first got you interested in virtual reality? I think, I think that's for a lot of people, the DK1. Uh, although I did follow that back then, I was like, ah, oh, I'm never going to be able to afford that anyway. So I think the first thing that got me really interested in virtual reality was actually Cardboard. Google Cardboard, when they announced that, uh, I remember because I was doing an experiment uh, in the lab um, uh, and I had to go to a separate room where I would use like, you know, my experiment setup and I had to, I installed that app on my phone. I was just like trying to like figure out how it works. So I was just holding the phone. I didn't have like a cardboard. I could already like see it in virtual reality. That was freaking awesome. 
Uh, I could already imagine I was working. Of course, of course, I wasn't perfect since I had no lenses or anything, but I could imagine like how I was working and just uh, positioning in front of my eyes. That was the first thing that got me really interested in virtual reality. And then my girlfriend got me the Humido VR headset uh, with which I started the channel and got to this point. So yeah, a lot has changed in a couple of years time. Then we got True Gaming asking me, can we collab together when I get an Oculus Go, which is soon. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to collab because uh, recording multiplayer with the Oculus Go is not an easy thing to do. Recording with the Oculus Go is at the moment pretty hard uh, because I don't know why, but audio and video don't go on the same recording file. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's no audio on, on the video file at all. So you need to record audio somewhere uh, separately on your computer or something. And also your microphone audio, you also need to record on a separate track, which makes the entire recording process a lot, a lot, a lot harder. But sure, if you, I mean, I hang around in Oculus rooms quite a bit and on like uh, some multiplayer experiences there as well, uh, like Alt Space and uh, um, I'm still hoping that they'll bring Rec Room to there as well, uh, since it's on pretty much every platform, but not on the Oculus Go yet. I would really like to see that. Uh, but yeah, if you meet me in an Oculus Room or in a, in a... But yeah, if you meet me in Big Screen or Alt Space or any of the other big multiplayer experiences, sure. Feel free to let me know who you are. We got Rich Artist Raymaker asking me, how big is your playroom space? Um, good question. I would say it's about because I'm I'm sitting in it right now. It's like well, let's say this is like what three three and a half meters by I would say three meters three meters by three by four. I would say three by four meters roughly. Um, it's not too big, but it's big enough for recording and also because I don't have like a wide angle lens or anything I can't make my play space too large because I'll be out of the field of view for most of the time uh, which is a little bit annoying if you're trying to do recording soon I think I have to even make my play space a little bit smaller because I'll be moving to a different room which will make it easier for me to do like regular recordings push out more content all of that kind of stuff which is still a little bit more important for me than having a big play space then we got uh, Buck asking me, what the heck is happening with all this Seeking Dawn nonsense? I have no ID, buddy. I made a pretty um, angry tweet about it. They did email me about it, uh, but it didn't really make a lot of sense and they wanted to clap together. Uh, at the moment, I haven't really worked out anything with them yet, uh, but as soon as I know more, uh, content will appear on the channel and I will keep you guys posted on that as well. Um, I, don't, I don't know, I really don't know what is going on. And then we go over to Facebook, on which I got one more question. Uh, this from Gertjan van Echdom. Will your marriage be in VR too? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think my girlfriend would like something like that because it's a much more private kind of thing. I might make some snaps, I might make some pictures, and uh, I might even do like a short little live stream if I'm able to do it. But I mean, we still need to plan a date so it won't be in anywhere in the near future. Uh, but I'll keep you guys posted on when all of that stuff is going down as well. Um, it's gonna be awesome though. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I did the VR proposal already, um, which was a lot of fun to do and a lot of fun to make. And it, it kind of made it a lot more personal because we now have a little personal space in the virtual world that is just ours. I think that's a really cool concept. It was actually Zim who notified me of that, you know. It's kind of awesome that you have that kind of, um, you know, the scene that I made that is like, even though it's not great, I, I'm not an artist by any mean, um, but it's pretty great to have like a little Thing of your own which is special in a way right uh, so yeah I want the marriage to be special as well but I want it to be special for us in the first place uh, I will be trying to do some effort for you guys as well to like show some regular content uh, probably on Instagram Twitter Facebook and maybe maybe I'll try uh, doing the live stream as well all right that was it for this video I hope you folks enjoyed it if you have a question yourself and you would like to have it read out loud on the channel as well let me know in the comment box below and I'll do my best answering it the first Monday of the next month. Okay, that was it. Leave a like, don't forget to subscribe. And if you wanna be as fast as me, hit that bell. See you later.